Hello, uh, welcome to another episode of the Data Science Leaders Podcast. Uh, I am your host, David Cole, and today we have uh, Chun Shiros. Uh, Chun is the SVP and head of the Enterprise Data Science Group at Regions Bank. How are you doing today, Chun? Good. Thanks, Dave, for having me. Great. Um, well, today we have a couple of agenda topics. Uh, one is sort of on the nose and pretty obvious, which is uh, we're going to be talking about banking and data science. So we're going to you know, talk a little bit about sort of your experience in, in, in the banking world, talk a little bit about use cases, um, and maybe how it might be different. Um, and the second thing we'll, we're going to be diving into is, is change man the change management, specifically how to win over data science skeptics. So talking to those users who may not trust the the you know the models and, and the work that a, a data science leader may be um, producing or the team may be producing, um, and just some tips and tricks there on 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 how to address that. All right, so why don't we start at the, at the top? So uh, first of all, how did you get into to banking? Like, how did you get into that world? When I look at your background, um, that's certainly not where you started. And that certainly was not what I envisioned either when I was growing up. Um, but that's a very good question. I often was um, asked that question. So um, one thing that is consistent across as I was growing up is that I always loved math and science. And um, as a matter of fact, I actually choose um, physics as my focus when I was in high school and the engineering major in college. So when I was in college, I was very fascinated by automatic facial recognitions. And that's what I choose to do my thesis um, on as a topic. And upon graduation, I decided that I need to come to the U.S. to continue pursuing a PhD in the same area in electrical engineering, focusing on digital image processing. Um, so in this whole um, time of my PhD um, educations, it was a combination of engineering and clinical research plus some need for um, data analysis and analytics. With that process, I actually took another um, master degree for statistics and um, probabilities, which I can leverage those theories, um, experimental design, hypothesis design, to really leveraging the data that I collected from the engineering model, applying to a clinical problems and help really helping the medicine world to solve some of the um, some of the clinical questions. And as I was continue to think about where's my next step after I graduate, I actually have a roommate at the time um, was serving in BBVA and we were having a discussions of, you know, career development and all that. And she was saying that Chen, what you're doing from a data analytics standpoint is really applicable to a lot of industries. So with that, I step into the banking world and I serve at Regions ever since then and have That's been great. enjoying it. So when, when I think of the banking world, I mean, you know, I think the data science is in, a, in, a, in some forms and statistics for sure has been around for actually a pretty long time. You have the sort of the whole mm -hmm. actuarial industry um, that has been around for a very long time. And, and when I look at actuaries and I look at data scientists today and, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of overlap, I, I would say. I mean, I'm curious, um, you know, how has the 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 a data the data data science sort of evolved in in banking over the years? Like, what are the types of of, of problems you're you're solving at, at Regions? Yeah, absolutely. I would say that um, you know um, the banking industry certainly is um, is leveraging data, leveraging modeling since you know the get go. A lot of financial modelings um, for you know, regulatory uh, um, purposes and also forecasting, budgeting um, purposes, leveraging time series data and various different um, um, global and micro, um, macro and economic um, factors. Now, as the data world and the compute um, capabilities it continue to expand, the um, the leverage of AI data science is just revolutionizing the banking services in every step of the customer's journey, from client acquisition to services to relationship management to retention of the of the relationships. AI and machine learnings are used in every step, from customer analytics, leveraging um, analytics for channel preference optimizations, recommendation engines. Personal, um, personalized, personalized advice and services, 
product and services optimizations. You name it, problem resolutions, omnichannel servicing, risk analytics, and fraud detections, and so on. So leveraging data analytics is really everywhere um, in the banking services. Yeah, and, and you know the the single source uh, or the the single view of the customer, right, is a pretty universal theme. I think that data science and science leaders are trying to solve um, throughout various industries. And I know in the banking industry, just in, from my personal, not with regions, of course, but with with a, I guess I suppose one of your competitors, um, it, it can be frustrating, right, when you're going from you know applying for a home loan, um, and then maybe you've, you've been on the uh, you know, you've had a checking or a savings account for for many, many years, and maybe you've also been on the investment side. Like, it's not always true that those various uh, different groups within large banks uh, are talking to one another. Is that a pro? Is is that something that um, you see as a, a problem in the banking industry as a whole, um, or is that something that you think uh, you know there are, has already sort of been solved by most most banks? And I'm, I just happen to have uh, an unlucky uh, banking relationship. Yes, absolutely. I would say the banking industry is absolutely embracing the technology and analytics to optimize the customer's experience. And nowadays, customers expecting their banking um, provide the banking providers and um, their their financial product providers are serving them as Amazon, as Google, as many of the tech companies, right? They're looking at experience. They're not looking at brand anymore, especially for the younger mm -hmm. generation. So the banking industry really is, is you know, stay on top of this in terms of the strategic focus to leverage this and enhancing the customer experience through an omnichannel servicing, know your customer 360s and able to provide customized, personalized solutions um, at a real-time basis and really is pertaining to the situations, the, the life um, stage of the customers wherever they needed it. And right. in my opinion, banking experience is really getting more and more intelligent and um, purposeful, connected, and likely probably will be invisible in the future in terms of the brand. And um, I think that AI is definitely enabling it and accelerating the journey. Yeah, I mean, the banking is, I think, um, traditionally been about relationships, right? You know, you actually physically yes. walk into a bank and, um, you know, you, you might have a wealth advisor, you know, at, at the bank. At, uh, you might know your, your bank teller even. Um, but those days are long in, in the rearview mirror. So how do you create like where does where how does where does data science come in when you're trying to forge a a a tighter relationship right and you sort of move like you said move a little bit beyond the the brand per se um, and you're looking more at the overall experience right and you have a pretty high high bar um, uh, in terms of experience like you mentioned uh, we we interact with Amazon um, you know every single day we know what that experience is is is, is like. And people, you know, look at their banking relationship and think it should, you know, hit that same bar. But how do you quantify like a, a great um, uh, a customer experience from a, a banking perspective? Absolutely, I'll address it in two separate, I guess, um, domains. On the, you know, traditional banking experience, um, especially um, in a commercial world where. You know, it is absolutely a relationship-based experience, right? Um, we have relationship managers who know our customers in and out. They know our corporate clients um, and talk to them on a daily basis. Now, with the with the realm of data and the higher expectations coming um, on the horizon, there is just challenges that our relationship manager is facing on serving our customers with the um, fitting their need at the right place, and also keep up with all the informations about the um, about the corporates. As a result, that's where AI solutions is going to be handy and helpful to mm -hmm. really elevate our capability of services to the corporate clients. And I'll give you an example that Regions has identified that need by closely working with our relationship managers 
and understanding that the challenges that they are facing on serving our customers continue to deliver that intimate relationship, but also at the same time, keep up with all the data that is generated. And we create an AI-driven platform where um, there is multiple functionalities that are embedded into it, including recommendation engines on suited products for our customers and mm -hmm. retention alerts where um, identifying re um, relationship that might be having attrition risk as well as potential financial stress in the near term and the insights and reasons for those recommendations were translated into an intuitive business language such that our relationship managers can just take it and planning on insightful and very effective calls with our customers to really not only deliver the right um, insights, but making them the valuable business partners. And on top of that, we also have provided daily insights that's on our relationship managers' fingertips where they can keep up with what is going on with their clients without having to go through all the sorts of data systems to pull the data and making their call planning. So the relationship managers is a, is a, is a great place to start. So historically, uh, they have you know, probably not had uh, the results of, of the outputs of models at their fingertips. Um, they've probably relied on the relationship itself, like you know, taking their clients out to lunch and things of that nature, um, and not, maybe not being always um, terribly data-driven. Data but I think times have obviously changed. Um, and data science, you know, can play a pivotal role in sort of augmenting, um, you know, their skills and their ability to to, uh, to to understand their customers' needs and also to position products at the right time in front of them. But where, you know, how do you can sort of convince maybe the, the skeptical uh, relationship manager you might be skeptical about, uh, you know, data science's role in, and how do you sort of convince them that uh, data science does have a role? Absolutely. You have raised the really questions and I think the key is to really be a thought partners with them. And becoming a thought partner meaning that we need to first understand what exactly is the challenge that they're facing and how can data and um, machine learning models and AI solutions can solve for it. And the first step really is to build the right solutions for the right problems. And the second one is to drive adoptions in the whole process. And what I meant by high quality and right solutions, I meant to manage the, through the entire machine learning cycles from the get-go, from understanding the business problems, define the targets to solve the problems, data preparations, to model valuations, to post-production monitoring, the quality of the solutions should be gauged and monitored through the entire process. And there's many various different metrics that we should measure in the whole process in terms of AI quality, like um, data quality, models, conceptual soundness, accuracy of the models, stability of the models, and during the post-production phase, understanding how the model is continued to perform um, including whether there's any data drift or accuracy drift to really stay informed on how the model is doing to solve the problem that is it designs to solve. And then on the adoption but, side... But Chen, sorry to interrupt, but most of those things, right, are, are, are things that a data scientist would be able to understand, right? Um, being able to look at, at, at drift and, 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 that, and various accuracy metrics um, and other model metrics, mm -hmm. um, those are things that a data scientist can understand. But how do you then convince, you know, a, a somebody who is not steeped in data science um, that the model is yep. performing well? Like, what are some some tricks that you have? Advice? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is to really create a sense of ownership, starting from the beginning. Take the users with you along the way in terms of designs and um, plan the uh, roadmap for the products understanding um, the pro business process and how the solution is going to implement it in the process. Second one is to start with the MVP with little or to um, limited amount of um, features and stand up a user pilot team that can help you validate the product 
as early as possible during the whole development cycles, and then continue to receive feedbacks on a um, continuous fashion and iteratively update the products by taking into the feedbacks before production. Not only that it creates the right product to the right users for the right problems, but create a sense of ownership for the user as well as they invest it in the product just like the rest of the technical teams. And once the production um, kick off, whole regular feedback sessions, right, with focus groups, identify product champions who leverage the product to the extent um, of its own potentials and also share stories um, among all the users, share success stories, share feedbacks, take the feedbacks back to the technical teams and continue to take those feedback into the products and enhance the product. So I would say that it is no longer a process of that the data science team, the technology team build a product, toss it across the fence for the users, and they have their own process. It's highly embedded interactive process where the users and the developers are continuously come having conversations to make sure the product is meeting the need of the users. That makes sense. I mean, it, it's Hearing that you have a pilot team, right, that gets involved in the very early stages of the project, yes. right, um, and then all the way to the, the those feedback sessions. I imagine having you know them involved in that entire journey, and even in some of those feedback sessions, you know, maybe to you know help translate from time to time what the 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 in this case the relationship managers might be saying back to the data science team, um, just because hopefully. You know, they've, they've sort of in that middle area where they know enough now about um, data science where they ac can actually help be a little bit of the, those translators, right, uh, between uh, those who are just getting introduced, uh, you know, to the product yes. recommendation engine or what have you for the first time. Yeah, you have any other recommendations um, for other data science leaders out there, um, you know, with regards to sort of change management and, and working with um, users in the, in the world of banking? Absolutely. I would just recommend that um, always keep your end goals in mind, which is to leverage AI and machine learning analytics to drive business impact. And as every um, project is kick off, ask yourself three questions. The why. Why do we need AI to solve this problem? Is this the um, best way to solve the problem? And then the second one is the how. How do you leverage AI to build a high quality solutions that meets the customer's need? And then the last one is really the what. Measure the impact. What is the impact of the solutions along the way? And continue to demonstrate incremental values. Perfect. Well, that makes, uh, that makes a lot of sense. I um, really appreciate you joining the Data Science Leaders Podcast, Chun. Um, if people want to reach out to you, can they uh, link up with you on LinkedIn? Absolutely. Great. Um, well, well, great. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Have a great uh, rest of your week. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me, Dave.